Hey Credit Warriors, welcome to the show. And today I want to talk about the biggest risk or the biggest danger out there this year in 2021 for those playing the credit card travel hacking game, i.e. collecting credit card points to exchange for luxury travel, business class flights, all-inclusive resorts, etc. So right now, there are a lot of points and miles hoarded up in people's accounts. And this is for a few reasons. Number one, is that people just didn't do a lot of traveling last year, all right, with most of the world shut down and restrictions on international travel. Number two is that airlines and hotels turned to selling points and miles in order to raise cash to help them get through the pandemic. And they sold points and miles both to individuals and to banks. Notably, Hilton sold $1 billion worth of Hilton points to American Express last year and other companies made similar moves. And we've also seen sales of points and miles to the public with bonuses of up to 1,000%. No, 100%. With bonuses of up to 100%. And many of these deals are only just ending now or ending in the next couple of months. And number three is that as soon as restrictions started lifting in early 2021, many credit card companies started going after new customers with amazing sign-up bonuses, such as 100,000 points on the Capital One Venture, 80,000 points on the Chase Sapphire Preferred, and bonuses of 75 to 100,000 on various Amex cards. Basically, they were using all those points they bought in 2020 to entice new members in 2021. So there are a lot of points and miles out there, and this could be a big headache for hotels and airlines, all right? Because they're gonna have to redeem these points. They're gonna have to give people free seats and free rooms. And it's especially bad for airlines since many hotel chains don't actually own the hotels, they just manage them. So they were slightly less hard hit than the airlines. Delta, for example, lost $12 billion in 2020. So these airlines and hotels are now faced with a dilemma. They've put all these points out into the economy and sooner or later, probably sooner rather than later, they are gonna have to honor these points and give passengers free flights and free hotel rooms. And that brings us to the most serious risk or serious danger in the credit card game in 2021, and that is devaluation. So we're gonna tell you what is already happening, what might happen, and how to protect those valuable points and miles. So right now we're starting to see a little bit of devaluation, but it's not really got that bad yet. Here's an example. Hilton just increased its top tier redemptions to up to 150 points per night. Also many hotel chains that put off changes last year during the pandemic are now playing catch up. So Hyatt, for example, will bring in peak and off peak pricing this summer. So if you wanna go at peak times and stay in a Hyatt with your points, it's gonna cost more. And that'll affect a lot of people because peak times is when most people wanna go. We also see hotels switching categories within a loyalty program to make them more expensive. And many airlines have also got rid of award charts in favor of dynamic pricing, where it's easier to kind of sneakily hide the fact that awards are getting more expensive. So how do you protect your points? Well, my first piece of advice would be do not hoard airline or hotel points because you can only use them through that one company. So if they devalue, you don't have any other choice to use them, okay? You're stuck and basically your points have lost value. So if you do have a big stash of points for one airline, for example, I would recommend booking something soon before we really see a lot of devaluation starting. If you have transferable points like Chase, Ultimate Rewards, Amex Membership Rewards, or City Thank You points, then you're in a better situation. Since all those programs have multiple airlines and hotel chains that you can transfer to, so if one of them devalues, doesn't offer such a good deal, you could transfer to a different one. Uh, then they've also got redemptions you can do through their travel portal where the points are worth a set dollar amount, so no devaluation unless the price of the ticket rapidly rises. You may also want to keep track of points valuations and see if there's any changes. Now, I don't normally like promoting other people's stuff on my channel, but the points guy does do a really great job of valuing points and miles. And he comes out with a whole list of valuations, updates it every month. You can check it out on his site. And we can see here that Delta miles, for example, have devalued by 0.1 of a cent since last year. Virgin Atlantic miles have also devalued by the same amount. So you may wanna consult this list when looking at what airline to transfer to, but the real test will be just 
going on an airline's website and searching for award availability and seeing how much that flight will cost in points. Do not transfer your points over until you have found award availability at the price you want, okay? That's the number one rule of travel hacking. Never transfer your points until you're 100% sure that you want to actually book that flight. Otherwise, you may get those valuable points trapped in that airline and you have no way to use them. And speaking of award availability, that could be another way in which airlines try to slow down the use of those points so they don't have to give out so many free seats at once. Limiting award availability would limit the number of flights people could take with their points within that period of time. Now let's talk about spending on credit cards in order to earn points and miles. Now you may want to stay away from hotel and airline cards for now. I would recommend earning either transferable points or even cash back. Yes, in a time of uncertainty around travel, you may want to actually ditch points and miles for a few months or a year and just earn cash back. And there are some great cards out there that earn really high rates, like the Amex Blue Cash Preferred that earns 6% back at supermarkets. Capital One just added 3% back at grocery stores on their Saver and Saver One cards as well. I recently cashed out 100,000 Amex points through my Charles Schwab Amex Platinum for $1,250 in cash back and I spent it all on crypto. Hey, hey, hey. I was able to buy in many of the recent dips that we've had, mostly in Bitcoin and Cardano. So basically if it goes up to previous levels, eventually, don't know how long that's gonna be, but I'll basically have doubled my money, $2,500 out of 100,000 Amex points, not bad. And that's not financial advice, I'm just sharing with you what I'm personally doing. And we are also following the advice in this video in booking travel now as well, before we see any serious devaluations. We're currently talking about booking a trip probably to the West Coast, maybe to LA and to Vegas. Uh, we're gonna use up 100,000 Amex points that Mrs. Credit Shifu has, and also two Hilton free nights that I have, and 100,000 Hilton points that I have as well. And we're probably gonna be booking that in the next few days, so when I do book it, I'll of course do a video about it. All right guys, on another note, we have a quite exciting announcement for you. So if you're into the finance space on YouTube, you probably have come across the channel Financial Education, hosted by Jeremy. Now Jeremy's team are putting on a special online training just for our viewers on how to pick the next big growth stock, and it's gonna be on May 31st in the evening, it's a webinar, and this is put on just for our viewers, guys. So do take advantage of it. Click the link below to register. It's totally free online training. It's gonna be really awesome. I'll be there too. So yeah, if you're interested in that, do check it out. Otherwise, please subscribe to our channel if you are new. Leave your comments about this below. Have you tried to book anything, encountered devaluations, etc.? Love to hear your stories. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.